Love in Quarantine A Love on Palmer Island Romance Written by Suzanne Ash Please like and subscribe to my channel. Chapter 1 Emily Smithfield sighed. Her eyes roamed over the small courtyard below and the row of windows on the other side. There was a bit of Carolina blue sky above the apartment building. The same view she'd been staring at for the past five days. Had it really been less than two weeks since the order to shelter in place had gone into effect in Charlotte? It felt more like months. She tucked her legs under her and reached for the blanket on the small couch her grandmother had always called a love seat. She should go out and water the plants on her balcony. Her little herb garden and the tomato plants she kept in clay pots were suddenly more important than they'd been in early February when she'd planted the seeds in a tray on her kitchen counter. She rose and walked into the kitchen to grab and fill her watering can. A glance at the clock on the stove confirmed what her subconscious knew. It was time for her group yoga session at Freedom Park. It had never been her most lucrative gig, but often was her most rewarding one. Emily missed the women who would congregate on Thursday mornings in the damp grass under one of the gigantic oaks to stretch and bend, following the ancient routines. The stress practically melted off of them. Emily shook her head and turned off the faucet. Out on her balcony, she forced her mind to a better place. A few deep breaths of fresh air and a look at what she could grow in the smallest of spaces always made her feel better. The tomato plant was growing well. If it kept branching out, she'd have a hard time fitting her yoga mat out here. Maybe now that the plant was full of green fruit, it would stop growing and focus on turning those tomatoes red. Movement across the courtyard in the apartment opposite of hers caught her attention. She'd never met the handsome neighbor who lived there. In the six months since he'd moved in, he hadn't been to a single meeting or social function. They hadn't even crossed paths in the laundry room. Maybe he did his laundry elsewhere, she mused. Or sent it off to be cleaned. Was there such a thing? She had too much time on her hands now that her business was shut down and school was about to be over. Her phone rang, distracting her from the guy across the courtyard. Hi, Trudy. How are you holding up? Emily knew her friend struggled with the imposed isolation. Trudy was the social butterfly in their group. At least she wasn't living alone. She shared an adorable house within walking distance of campus with three other roommates. Emily had met Trudy their freshman year in English Lit and they had been best friends ever since. Hanging in there, though Luke is getting on my last nerve. All the guy does is play video games in the living room all day. Trudy sounded annoyed. Hasn't he always done that? Yes, but I'm not usually here to witness it 24-7. Never mind. Did you talk to the lady down on Palmer? I called Miss Doris this morning to cancel our reservation. She was very understanding. From the sound of it, they are considering putting a stop to all vacation rentals on the island. Emily wondered what that would do to the people in the small coastal town. Palmer Island was where she and her family had spent every summer vacation for as long as she could remember. It's a shame we can't go. I was looking forward to this trip, Trudy sighed. I know. Emily had been counting down the days for her PA position at UNC to end. She enjoyed working with Professor Warden, but the end of the semester was a stressful time. She'd be spending much of the day grading one last set of papers. After that, she'd officially be unemployed, with summer classes cancelled. We'll make it up. And as soon as this is over, we're having lunch at Loopy's. I need a chicken and dumpling fix. They chatted for a few minutes, and by the time Emily hung up, she felt better. She wasn't alone in this, even if it felt that way sometimes. Determined to get herself into a better frame of mind, she grabbed her yoga mat and went back out on the balcony. She may not be able to go to her favorite parks or out into the woods on the outskirts of the city, but she could go through her workout routine in the fresh air and sunshine. Noah ran his hand through his hair, avoiding the temptation to pull on it. He took a slow, steadying breath. I get it, you're worried. 
We need more data to start improving it, but from everything I'm seeing, this is working, and you'll see the offers within the next week or two. Trust me, I've done this for a while, and every campaign we've set up so far has turned a profit, hasn't it? His client's response barely registered because the woman across the way was out on her balcony again. He wasn't sure when he'd first noticed her. Truth be told, he had no idea how long she'd been living in the place. She'd caught his eye one day when he was on yet another call with a client. Over the past few weeks, he'd watched as she stepped outside with a cup of coffee in the morning, then again as she enjoyed the warm rays of the midday sun before finally relaxing with a glass of wine, staring up at the stars after dark. He couldn't figure out what she was doing today. The plants she'd put into large terracotta containers a few days ago had been pushed into the far corner of the balcony. The small table and chairs were gone, and from the looks of it, she was dragging a camping pad out there. Maybe she was taking a nap. Noah forced his eyes back to the computer screen and his attention to the call with Tobias Ondale, a local realtor who'd hired him two years ago to run his social media ads. I don't know if it's a good idea to up the budget. Our numbers are way down. People don't want to move right now. They don't want to risk going to open houses, the realtor said. Noah had to bite back a sigh. That's why we've created the campaign to address those issues. It's what will make you stand out from your competition. Between the virtual tours, the scheduled visits, and your motivated sellers, this is going to work. He had no doubt in his mind that it would. All he needed was a little trust from Tobias. He was almost ready to guarantee sales within 90 days if they ran with this. Tobias was quiet on the other end of the line. Noah waited patiently. Tobias wasn't a man who could be pushed into action. Tell you what, the older gentleman finally said. Let's try it for a few months. I've got to do something or I'll have to let some of my people go. He sounded tired and defeated, like everyone Noah worked with these days. Dealing with clients had never been this emotionally draining. Usually, online advertising made up a small portion of their overall marketing efforts. With the quarantine, it had become one of very few options and would make the difference between staying in business or shutting the doors for good. It put a lot of pressure on Noah, and he wasn't sure he liked it. Yes, business was booming, and he was more in demand than ever. But that brought its own challenges. Having to talk to the small business owners he ran ads for on a daily basis was one of those. He couldn't remember a time when he'd talked this much. Most days he started to lose his voice by the time afternoon rolled around. Noah shook his head and wrapped up his conversation with Tobias. I'll have the first set of ads ready for your approval by the morning. We'll run them for 14 days, then evaluate and tweak from there. When he got off the phone, Noah poured himself another cup of coffee and stepped over to the living room window to get a better look at what the pretty brunette was doing. Not napping, that was for sure. Instead, she was contorting her body in all sorts of strange ways. It looked painful. Finally, he watched as she slumped down on the floor. He waited a moment to see what she would do next. She didn't move. He sipped on his coffee and waited, growing concerned as the minutes ticked by. Noah slid open his sliding glass door and stepped onto his own balcony. It wasn't an area he used much and it showed. A faded plastic chair and side table stood neglected in the middle of the small space, covered in dead leaves. He should clean this up. The young woman remained slumped down on the blue foam mat, and though it was hard to make out through the balcony railing, it looked like her eyes were closed. Maybe she'd hurt herself earlier. Everything okay over there, he called across the small grass-filled courtyard, separating their buildings. No reaction. Do you need help? When she didn't stir, he reached for his phone in his back pocket. He came up empty. He must have left it on his desk when he'd finished his call with Tobias. He'd just turned to head inside when he heard her reply. I'm fine. Doing my savasana, she called. She stood up and leaned against the railing, a huge smile on her face. You're what? Savasana. Corpse pose. He had no idea what she was talking about. Apparently, it showed on his face. 
It's the cooldown at the end of a yoga session. I didn't know you did yoga. Heat crept up his neck the moment the words left his mouth. He knew next to nothing about his pretty neighbor. Been doing it for 12 years now. Couldn't manage this quarantine without it. You should give it a try. He smiled and nodded, unsure what to say to keep the half-shouted conversation going. I gotta grab some water. Catch you later. She rolled up her mat and was gone. Chapter 2 Noah was sitting at his desk, finalizing the copy for a series of Facebook ads for Tobias, when she stepped back out onto her balcony. Throughout the afternoon and evening yesterday, his eyes had wandered over to her place. He'd caught a few glimpses of her working in the kitchen or curled up on the couch. She hadn't made it back outdoors, though. Until now. His pretty neighbor walked out in a plain white t-shirt and denim shorts. With one last glance at the ad copy he was supposed to be working on, he stood and grabbed his insulated mug. He stepped out onto the balcony. It was now swept clean and the lone chair and table wiped off. It had been a bit of work, but well worth it. He'd sat out here last night, beer in hand, hoping the woman across the way would come out. Instead, he'd watched her giggling and chatting in her living room, an enormous bowl of popcorn in her lap, eyes glued to her laptop, phone in hand. He was dying to know what had captured her attention. Good morning, Noah shouted across the courtyard. Good morning to you too. Her face lit up in a huge smile that took his breath away. It washed away the sliver of doubt that had crept in the moment the words left his mouth. It's gonna be a pretty day. He looked up. Not a cloud in the sky. She was right. Too bad they were stuck inside. The parks were closed, and the mayor had asked everyone to stay at home as much as possible, only venturing out when absolutely necessary. Since he had his groceries delivered and worked from home, that meant he hadn't left his apartment for weeks. He nodded her way. I'm Emily. She gave him a cute little wave. Noah, he replied, raising his coffee mug in her direction. Coffee, she asked. Yep. Can't make it without a solid 20 ounces first thing in the morning. Emily laughed, the sound echoing between the buildings. Me neither. I tried giving it up once. Didn't go well. She shook her head, her eyes dancing with mirth. Headaches, he asked, remembering an unpleasant 24 hours without coffee when his Amazon order had been delayed. Ever since, he kept at least two pounds of the stuff on hand. Massive ones. Not worth it. I'll happily stay addicted to caffeine. There are worse things, he agreed, thinking back on his college days, when he'd run on Red Bull and donuts most days. Exactly. Plus, it's a good source of antioxidants. She turned to inspect the plants he'd noticed yesterday. What are you growing? he asked, wanting to keep the conversation going. Nothing much. A couple of cherry tomatoes and herbs. If UPS shows up in the next little while, I'll be able to add peppers and salad greens. She turned to look inside her living room. Did she expect them to materialize on the coffee table? I didn't realize you could order live plants online, Noah said. Emily looked confused for a moment. I guess you could, she said. I have the seeds though. I'm waiting on a few pots that will fit over the rail and potting soil. That makes sense. Making the most of the space out here. I should look into that. He glanced around his own bare balcony. Maybe he should try to grow something out here. If he was stuck here all summer, it might be nice to have something to do outside. He turned back towards Emily's apartment. Makes it hard to do yoga though. With all those extra pots. She shrugged. I'll manage. Good practice, for spatial awareness. And there's nothing coming between me and my daily yoga sessions. She smiled and waved before stepping inside her living room. Noah's shoulders slumped. He wasn't ready for their conversation to be over. He got the feeling there was more to her statement than she was ready to share. Not that he blamed her. The balconies were a pretty public space, 
and they had to raise their voices to be able to hear each other. He took a long draw from his coffee mug before heading inside and getting back to the grind that was his day job. As he was trying to map out yet another advertising campaign for a client, his mind drifted to Emily and how he might be able to get a hold of her phone number. Maybe he could bribe the super. The guy owed him after he'd fixed his virus-infected computer. Emily gathered what little garbage she had and headed out the door for her daily outing to the dumpster and mailbox. It was the highlight of her day and one of the few reasons to change into a decent shirt and clean yoga pants. That, and meeting the guy in the apartment across from her. They'd had a nice conversation yesterday, talking loudly across the courtyard. She noticed the postcard in her mailbox right away. It was an old black and white photo of a tall lighthouse surrounded by washed-up trees with the ocean in the background. She could only guess when it had been taken. In the thirties, maybe? It had that vintage look with a white scalloped border around the actual image. Emily turned the postcard over, curious about who may have sent it to her. There was no address, no stamp, just a simple handwritten note scrawled in blue ink across the back of the card. Enjoyed our chat. Hope your planters and soil arrived. Would love to continue our conversation. Noah. Below the brief message, he jotted down his phone number. Emily stared at the picture of the lighthouse as she sat at her small kitchen table her cell phone in front of her. Should she call the number on the card? Stalling, she stood up and grabbed the compost bucket off the kitchen counter. Opening the cabinet under the sink, she pulled out the plastic bin that held her small worm farm. The guys would appreciate the banana peels, apple cores, and veggie trimmings she'd collected over the past week. Her friends thought it was weird to keep a worm composting bin in the apartment. Emily enjoyed being able to recycle her food scraps and turn them into a wonderful organic fertilizer for her house and patio plants. In a few months, these little guys would turn trash into black gold. She washed up and looked around for something else to do. Unfortunately, her sparsely furnished place was spotless. There wasn't even laundry to fold. Sighing, she sat back down at the kitchen table and made up her mind. She punched the numbers into her phone and held her breath. Wild Waters Marketing, Noah Waters, speaking. How can I help you? His voice was deep and dark, his tone much more professional than it had been during their casual conversations half-shouted across balconies. Air, this is Emily. She paused and took a quick breath. From across the way. Her heart was beating loud enough that he could probably hear it on his end. Oh hey, Emily. Great to hear from you. You got the postcard? His tone changed into something much more casual and joyful. I did. Thanks for sending it. It's beautiful. I thought you might like it. Where did it come from? It looks very old. Do you know what lighthouse it is? Where it is? She stopped herself. It is an old card. And yes, it's the one on Hunting Island, down near Beaufort. My mom and I found a whole stack of postcards in a tiny little antique shop off Main Street. How fun. I'd love to make it down there one day. We spent our summers on Palmer Island when I was a kid and went to Charleston quite a bit. Never made it that far south, though. My parents took us camping at the state park there. My brother and I climbed the lighthouse every summer. Noah's chair creaked. Emily pictured him leaning back and putting his feet up. How many siblings do you have? she asked. A brother. He's living out west. How about you? I have a younger sister. She moved up to Charlotte last year to start nursing school. Of course, that's on hold right now, and she's not far enough along to help out at the hospital. Oh man, that's rough. How about you? How's this whole shelter-in-place thing working for you? Emily sighed. I'm doing okay. I finished undergrad before all this started. I'm supposed to start grad school at Duke in the fall. We'll see what happens with that. Mostly, I'm hanging around the house, feeding my worms, and growing tomatoes. Worms? Vermicomposting. 
I keep a bin of earthworms that eat through my kitchen scraps and turn it into soil. Why had she brought this up now? Okay. It's not gross or anything. You can't really smell it. And it's better than throwing all that stuff into the trash. Instead, it turns into an amazing soil amendment for my plants. I'm going to have to look into that. You don't have any plants, though, do you? She asked. She didn't remember seeing any on his balcony or in the windows on this side of the building. Working on it. From the sound of it, he was tapping a pen on his desk. Was she starting to annoy him? How about you? Is this turning your life upside down? Not really. He paused. Honestly, little has changed for me. I do what I've always done. Working from home, getting my groceries delivered. I miss seeing my mom, but we talk on the phone. Now that the weather's nice, I'd love to go up to the mountains for a hike. Hopefully that's happening again soon. I miss being out in nature. And with my clients. Emily looked out the window at the one tree in the center of the courtyard. It would be nice to put her yoga mat out there. Maybe hold a free class for the residents. Sadly, congregating in the courtyard was off the table for now. Clients? What do you do? I teach yoga. Mostly outdoors, but occasionally at the studio up on Queens Boulevard. Of course, none of that's happening right now. Emily swallowed hard at the thought of her bank account. Her small savings was slowly but surely dwindling away, no matter how frugal she tried to be. That's your main source of income? She nodded, then realized what she was doing. It is. Listen, I have to go. Why don't we finish this conversation another day? She stood and walked through the living room into the bedroom where she knew he couldn't see her. How about a coffee date tomorrow morning? Can I call you around 9? Chapter 3 Noah checked the message on his phone and called Emily. Good morning. Go look out your front door. What? Noah? Yes. Walk to the front door and open it, he repeated. Had she not saved his number? That couldn't be a good sign. Okay, she took a few soft steps and opened the door. Oh, she gasped and he heard her pick up the paper bag the bakery down the street had delivered. He'd placed two orders and had them dropped off by a local startup that delivered anything by bike. Don't open it yet. Bring it outside. He stood and opened the sliding glass door before stepping outside. A large clay pot he'd ordered online sat on the balcony, a bag of potting soil, propped up against it. He set his goodie bag down and walked to the rail. He didn't have to wait long. Emily weighed the bag. Careful, he cautioned. He didn't want her to spill hot liquid all over herself. Emily lowered the bag and carefully placed it on the small side table, still pushed into the far corner of her balcony. Noah watched her open the brown paper bag. She pulled the paper coffee cup out and opened the lid. That smells amazing, she exclaimed. She took a cautious sip and turned towards him. A huge smile lit up her face. There's more in there, he coaxed over the phone, grabbing his own cup without taking his eyes off her. Emily put the coffee down and reached back into the bag with her free hand. She pulled the muffin he'd ordered out. Noah kept quiet, hoping he'd chosen well. Oh, yum. Blueberry is my favorite. How did you know? Her voice was high and excited as she jammed the phone between her chin and shoulder, freeing both hands to unwrap the treat. I didn't. They're my favorite from Blossom Bakery, and I'd hoped you'd like it as well. He leaned back and took a sip of his coffee. The French roast was dark and bitter, but the rich cream mellowed it out to perfection. He sighed. Nothing like their coffee. I missed this while they were closed. During the first week of the quarantine, everything but the most essential stores had been forced to shut down. After enough complaints, some of the smaller specialty food establishments like the bakery down the block had reopened, and he was doing his best to support local business and get his favorite caffeine fix at the same time. 
Let me try, she mumbled before swallowing the first bite of muffin. This is yummy. She took a sip of coffee and sighed in contentment before plopping down into her balcony chair. The phone was back in her hand, the muffin resting on the bag, the breakfast had been delivered in. Tell me if I'm out of line here, but I've been thinking about your yoga classes. Have you considered doing them online? Noah took a bite of muffin. They were as good as he remembered. You're not the first person to mention that, Emily sat back in her chair and took another sip of coffee. Something you're working on? Honestly, I wouldn't know where to start. Or if it would even work. Why wouldn't it work? I interact with my clients, get a feel for how they are doing, correct their posture. She paused for a moment. There's a lot more to yoga than showing how to do a pose. I'm sure you're right, but isn't it better to get something out there? Isn't encouraging people to do what they can at home better than nothing? He asked. Or are there dangers to doing the poses a little bit incorrectly? Emily was quiet for a moment. Not really. I could give them suggestions on what to avoid. Most people are pretty good about stopping when it hurts or feels wrong. And I don't always catch everything right away in class. She went quiet again. Noah waited. You're right. It would be better than nothing. But where would I even begin? Why don't you start with a short video of a couple of simple poses anyone can do at home? Real beginner stuff that doesn't require any special equipment or a lot of space. Noah had a better idea of how it worked after spending the evening watching several yoga videos on YouTube. There seemed to be a market for both free and paid content, now more than ever. I don't have a fancy camera, or lights or anything like that. She sounded hesitant. You have your phone, and your apartment should get some good light in the mornings. That should be enough to get you started, he said. Why don't you give it a try? Send it to me, and I'll give you some feedback. If it works out, you can think about investing in a better camera. What would I film though? Emily sounded contemplative. Maybe some simple stretches to promote relaxation? Sounds good to me. I could use some of that, Noah said. He rolled his shoulders to release some of the tension already built up in there. Spending most of his day hunched over a computer took its toll. Your neck and shoulders, she asked. Noah nodded. Yes. I don't make enough time to get up and stretch throughout the day. Got anything that will help me work out the kinks at the end of the day? Absolutely. And there's a simple little routine you can do right at your desk. Do you want me to start with that video? She suddenly sounded excited to record. That would be great. I'm sure a lot of other people are in the same position right now, working from home and all. I bet you're right. They chatted about how their lives had changed, how their families and friends were handling things, and what everyone was doing to stay in touch. It was the best coffee break Noah could remember. The sun shining on his face, the birds chirping in the courtyard, and a beautiful woman sharing a cup of coffee and conversation with him. You didn't have to do this, you know. I would have enjoyed our coffee date with homebrew. She smiled at him before taking the last bite of the blueberry muffin. I know. He grinned. That pretty smile makes it all worthwhile though. Here's my first attempt. What do you think? The text message came in just as he was finishing up yet another client call. Why did everyone feel the sudden need to talk about the campaigns in great detail, second-guessing everything he was doing? Noah tried hard not to let his frustration show. How was he supposed to get to all the extra work his clients were throwing him, which he was grateful for, if his phone and video chat app kept interrupting him every five minutes? This one was different, though. He smiled as he opened the file she'd sent him and hit play. Emily was sitting in a kitchen chair in what he assumed was the middle of her living room with the morning light filtering in through an open window. He'd been right. It lit up the scene perfectly. He watched in fascination as Emily went through a series of simple movements. She was a great teacher, her voice calm and soothing through the entire process. She needed a clamp-on microphone for better sound quality down the road, 
but this was something he could work with. He walked over to his computer and uploaded the file. He edited out a few awkward seconds at the beginning and end before boosting the audio. Without giving it a second thought, he created a YouTube account for her and uploaded the video. He grabbed his phone and texted her the link. What do you think? Chapter 4 Hi, you, Emily waved excitedly at her friend Trudy. It was good to see her best friend's face, even if it was through a video screen. What have you been up to today? I worked a double shift. We're trying to hire more people, but who wants to work at a grocery store right now? She looked tired. At least all this overtime is doing wonders for my college fund. I might be able to take an extra class or two next semester. Especially if everything's online again. Enough about that, though. Are we doing movie night? Yes, we are. Ice cream sundaes and becoming Jane? Emily asked. She rose from the couch and made her way to the kitchen. Got anything good to work with? She opened her own freezer and pulled a carton of chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream out, along with a bag of frozen strawberries. Yep. Butter pecan, my favorite. And plenty of chocolate chips and coconut flakes to top it off. You're weird. Emily scooped the ice cream into a bowl and topped it with sliced strawberries and whipped cream. Ready? Trudy nodded, holding up her own ice cream bowl. Let's start the movie. Ready, set, go. They hit play at the same time and chatted throughout the movie, only pausing during their favorite scenes. This is so good. I could watch this movie at least once a week, Trudy said as the credits started rolling. The ice cream was long gone, and they'd moved on to popcorn. Emily nodded and turned off the TV. This is the highlight of my day. I'm going stir-crazy in here. She glanced around her apartment. Maybe I should apply at the grocery store. Don't even think about it. Trudy's voice was firm. I'm only staying because I have no other choice. It's work there or drop out of school completely. You have options. Plus, I've worked there for ages. I know how to limit my exposure. Trust me, you don't want to start a new job in a high-risk environment right now. I might not have much of a choice, Emily trailed off. What about your yoga clients? Can't you do remote sessions or something? Funny you mention that. Noah suggested the same thing. He even had me record a trial video. Wait, what? Who is Noah? Trudy sat up and moved her phone closer. All Emily could see were her nose and eyes. My neighbor. He's in the place across the courtyard. We started talking out on our balconies the other day. Emily stopped. She wasn't sure how much she wanted to share about this guy. He was cute, and she enjoyed their phone calls. Good looking? Trudy asked. Ahem, yes. And super helpful. The yoga videos were his idea. He set me up with a YouTube channel and everything. Wanna see? Sure, but don't try to change the subject. How cute is this guy and how long have you been seeing him? I'm not exactly seeing him, Emily hedged. We've had a few phone conversations, the last couple of days and sort of a breakfast date. How do you have a sort of date? Trudy wasn't going to let this go. He had coffee and muffins delivered to both our places. We sat out on our balconies and talked on the phone. How sweet. Girl, that isn't a sort of date. That's a very romantic one. And he's helping you get online. I already like the guy. How long have I been bugging you to create some online content? The world needs you to teach them yoga. Ha. Huh. I seriously doubt that. I'm enjoying teaching, though, and Noah is helping me over all those technical hurdles that have held me back. He's in tech then? Online marketing, I think. He does Facebook ads for a bunch of people in town. Interesting. I always thought you had a bit of a thing for nerds. Remember Calvin our freshman year? With the glasses. 
Always working on an app? Trudy snickered. Don't make fun. He's a great guy and his company is worth a fortune. Emily had stayed friends with Calvin after they'd agreed they didn't make the greatest couple, and she was happy for him now. If only he could find the right girl to draw him out of his shell and make him happy. Like Noah did for her. Emily felt the heat rising in her cheeks and turned the screen of her tablet to hide it. Trudy needed no more ammunition. No making fun of guys you have or have had feelings for. Noted. Trudy sighed and popped the last of her popcorn in her mouth. OMG. She blew pieces of popcorn all over the screen. Have you looked at your stats? And the comments. Your yoga video is going viral. What? You're getting tons of views. It's going up as I'm watching this. You have to record another video tomorrow. Promise me. I finished my first group session. Emily wiped the sweat off her brow with a towel. It had been an intense hour of advanced yoga with some of her old clients. And she'd been able to train them from her living room. It was exhilarating and strange at the same time. How did it go? Did they enjoy it? Noah asked, stirring something. Probably yet another cup of coffee. You should slow down on the caffeine, she cautioned, not for the first time. It went well. Really well. Everyone loved it and wants to know if this can be a regular thing. I will. This is only the second cup today. Noah went quiet for a moment. What did you tell them? I got them signed up on the spot. Thanks to the app you recommended, it was really easy. We have sessions scheduled all throughout the summer. And most of her yoga students had already paid for the first month. At this rate, her income would be up to its pre-quarantine levels in no time. Good. Those group and one-on-one -on -one lessons are great. There's definitely a market for a video course, too, though. Have you given it any more thought? Noah had brought the topic up several days ago, during one of their coffee dates. He was convinced she could pay her way through graduate school with online yoga training. I'm still thinking about it. I'm not sure I'm qualified though. Self-doubt crept in whenever she considered the idea. Your free videos are doing well. People love them and are asking for more. Have you looked at the latest comments? They are basically begging you. Where would I start though? Emily curled up on the couch and bunched the towel up in her lap. Start with the basics. What would you teach someone who walked into a yoga studio for the first time or hired you for one of those outdoor sessions without prior experience? Noah's voice was calm. He waited for her reply, giving her space to think it through. I have a set of basic exercises that I take them through. It works on all the fundamentals. Emily had been thinking about this for a while. She'd even made a list of what she would want to include in the course. Then I'd move on to some of the more advanced moves and maybe create a morning and evening routine. Sounds to me like you have most of it planned out already. Have you filmed any of it yet? Noah's voice was becoming more animated and urgent. Not yet. It's a huge project. Ah, he said. That's what's holding you back. Stop thinking about completing the whole thing. Start with one video. It doesn't matter which one. Something that's fun and easy. No need to do them in order. But you do need to start. Are you ready for that? I could do that. Maybe start with the evening routine? Those were the easiest poses, focusing on relaxation and deep stretching. Whatever works for you. Send me the video files as you record them. Oh, and if you have a rough idea of the course, shoot me an email with an outline. I'll get cracking on the order page and stuff. He trailed off. The idea of sales copy and having to make an offer almost had her running for the hills. But so far, Noah hadn't steered her wrong. He was proving to be a good friend. More than a friend, if she was perfectly honest with herself. Yet, they hadn't spent a single moment in the same room, let alone touched. 
she couldn't wait to meet him in person and hug him. Maybe run her fingers through his hair. I have some notes for the course, she said. Do you want to go over them and tell me what you think? She held her breath. Of course. To be honest, I've enjoyed working through your free videos. If it's helpful, I'd be happy to go through the course when it's done and give you feedback as a total yoga newbie. He sounded almost shy. I'm so glad you're getting into yoga. Your back will thank you. She smiled thinking about him following along with the free videos they've created together. He'd been such a big help when she first started playing around with video editing software. Since then, he taught her how to manipulate and polish the raw video files, upload them to her channel and take care of everything else that came with running a fledgling online business. At the end of the day, none of it had been as hard or complicated as she'd feared. Sure, there was a learning curve, but Noah had proved to be an excellent tutor. She couldn't imagine quarantine life without him and their daily balcony chats. Chapter 5 Would you like to have dinner with me? Noah asked during their morning chat. He held his breath and tried not to stare at her across the courtyard. After this is all over? I would love to. Her huge smile took his breath away. I was hoping for tonight. How? I could cook, but I'm not sure coming over is a good idea. She sounded hesitant and confused. That's tempting, but I agree. We should follow the rules and stay put. I was thinking I could order us some food and we'd hang out like this and enjoy a meal together instead of coffee and pastries. He grinned. It was funny how different and familiar the dating rituals during these trying times were. First you took a girl out for coffee. That would be lovely. What type of food are you in the mood for, he asked. Surprise me, she said before wrapping up their conversation and heading inside to record another video. He'd created a monster. And he had no idea what type of food she liked aside from blueberry muffins. Noah spent the next hour browsing the menus of various Charlotte restaurants who delivered to their apartment complex. Eventually, he settled on one of his favorite Thai places. She hadn't mentioned any food allergies or dietary restrictions. Surely she would have told him about a shellfish allergy or anything like that. He ordered the mixed pad thai with chicken, shrimp, and beef, along with a nice bottle of Pinot Grigio for each of them. Next, he called Tom, a local florist who'd been a longtime client. Tom, I need your help. I want to send flowers to a girl. We sort of started dating. And? Tom sounded curious. Not quite at the Red Roses stage yet. Exactly. We haven't actually met in person because of the quarantine. I've arranged for a romantic dinner, having food delivered to each of our places. Do you have any idea what the appropriate flower choice for that kind of situation may be? Noah tried not to sound too desperate. Tom laughed. I'm not sure there is such a thing. Why don't you tell me a little more about this woman? She's funny and smart. Into yoga and starting grad school next month. She grows tomatoes on her balcony and hopes to have a big garden someday. She's beautiful and caring. Always ready to help someone out. You've got it bad, Tom teased. I get the idea. So you're not ready to profess your everlasting love, but there's definitely something going on between the two of you. And the girl has a nature vibe. Why don't we keep it sweet and casual with some pretty summer flowers? I'll take care of everything. Noah sighed in relief. Thanks, man. What would you like the card to say? Tom asked. Noah was stumped. The flowers had seemed like a good idea. Do I need to add a card? It's customary. We can keep it simple. I'll come up with something and add your name. Tom said. You're a lifesaver. Who knew that dating during an enforced quarantine would be even harder than any other time in his life? Not that he'd dated much. Noah preferred his solitary life. Relationships could be complicated things. This, whatever this was with Emily, felt different. It was easy and natural. 
like she'd always been a part of his life. He found himself pacing his bedroom and whistling as he tried to figure out what to wear to their first official date. They'd agreed to a video chat date in their respective dining areas and he was determined to make a good impression. Time slowed to a crawl while he spent the rest of the afternoon tending to his brand new tomato plants, answering client questions, and cleaning the apartment from top to bottom. Not everything would be in view of the webcam he planned on using, but you never knew. Better safe than sorry. His mother's favorite motto had served him well over the years. Finally, it was time to grab a shower and get dressed. Why was he nervous? This wasn't all that different from their almost daily coffee dates. Emily finished up her last one-on-one -on -one session with her biggest yoga client. The wife of the local bank's president had hired her for daily virtual yoga classes. She was building a reputation as a yogi and kept getting new clients through word of mouth and, to her surprise, from her YouTube videos. One glance at the clock moved her into action. She had 30 minutes until her dinner date with Noah. That left barely enough time to shower and fix her hair. Emily's eyes swept across the apartment and she groaned. Clothes, towels, and dishes were scattered everywhere. It was very unlike her. Usually, her minimalist apartment was spotless. But she'd been busy and, frankly, a little stressed out. This little yoga venture Noah had talked her into was growing by leaps and bounds. It was hard to keep up with everything, and at the end of a long day filled with back-to-back -back yoga sessions and video production, she'd curl up on the couch to chat with Trudy or watch a history documentary in bed while drifting off to sleep. How had her life gotten so busy and out of control during a quarantine of all times? She shook her head and headed to the shower. By the time the video chat chimed, she'd straightened up the living room and the visible part of the kitchen. There wasn't time to do anything about the pile of dishes in the sink. She vowed to tackle those first thing in the morning. She turned the 60s rock she'd been playing in the background off, sat down, and answered the call. You clean up nice, she blurted, heat rising in her cheeks. Assuming this would be a casual date, she'd slipped into a pair of jeans and a dark t-shirt. At least she'd done her hair and put on a little lipstick. On a whim, she dug her favorite silver earrings and necklace out of the old jewelry box she'd inherited from her grandmother. So do you. You look beautiful. His voice sounded thick. Thank you for the flowers. Emily moved the bouquet closer so he could see. She hoped he didn't notice that they were in her juice pitcher, the only vase-like object she owned. No one had ever sent her flowers before. It had been a huge surprise to find them a few minutes ago after the bell rang. You're welcome. A client of mine is a florist. I had him pick them out. I hope you like them. She moved closer and took another sniff of the bee balm and sweet rocket that made up the more fragrant part of the arrangement. I love them. I can't remember the last time I got flowers. She blushed again and took a steadying breath. Why was she so nervous? She had to get this anxiety under control or she'd make a fool of herself on their first real date. I'm glad I sent them, then. Noah smiled at her over the screen. Food should be here soon. Hungry? Famished. I didn't have time for lunch. Back-to-back -back clients. She returned the smile and relaxed into her kitchen chair. Emily took a sip of the glass of ice water she'd set in front of her. Before she could relax into the conversation with Noah, the doorbell rang. That should be the food. Why don't you go take a look? What are we having? she asked. Noah shook his head. I'm not telling. It's a surprise. He paused. I hope you'll like it. Emily laughed and walked to the front door. The delivery guy was gone, but two large brown paper bags were sitting in front of the door. Emily took them inside and washed her hands before taking the containers out and setting everything on the kitchen table. There was no label on any of them. The chopsticks were the only hint as to what type of food he'd ordered. The last thing she pulled out was a bottle of Pinot Grigio. Oh, nice. How are we going to share this, though? Emily asked. 
Before Noah could answer, his own food was delivered. Just a minute, he said. He returned and held up a second bottle, grinning at her. It's not going to be a problem. Emily laughed. I hope you don't expect us to finish two bottles. I'm a lightweight. Noah's cheeks blushed. Not at all. I thought a glass would be nice with our meal. I was just teasing, Emily assured him. She grabbed a wine glass and a bottle opener. Let's give this a try. The food smelled amazing, causing her stomach to growl. To a tasty first dinner together, Noah toasted once they were both settled. The wine was crisp with just a hint of sweetness. A perfect balance to the spicy food he had ordered. Emily spooned a large serving of the mixed pad thai on her plate and picked up the chopsticks. This is good, she said after the first bite and another sip of wine. Really good. Where did you order from? Thai Garden, he replied. It's the best I've found around here. This is so much better than the place I usually order from. Emily dug in with gusto. I'm glad you like it. I wasn't sure if Thai food would be your thing. Noah smiled. Are you kidding? It's one of my top three favorite foods. Emily couldn't keep the excitement out of her voice. Now I've gotta ask. What are the other two? Noah reached behind the camera and came back with a pen and notepad. Emily giggled. For future reference. We may want to do this again, he said. That would be nice. I'm not sure either of them would be appropriate for a dinner date, Emily admitted. Spit it out. If you tell me, I'll tell you my favorites. Deal. Emily took a sip of her water. You have to promise not to laugh. Noah crossed his heart. Ice cream sundaes with popcorn and Hawaiian pizza. Emily stared at him, daring him not to laugh. Hmm, okay. You're right. Not great fancy dinner choices. Pizza is good. Not sure I share your fondness of pineapple, but there's something we have in common. He smirked. What's that? Emily leaned in. Interesting taste in pizza. My favorite is a BLT pie from one of the local shops. Like a BLT sandwich, she asked. Yes, exactly. It's a traditional pizza crust with mayo, sliced tomatoes, and crumbled bacon. Topped with arugula. Sounds, interesting. Emily tried hard not to let her disgust for mayo on pizza show. Is the mayo cold or hot, she asked. Hot. There's cheese too. The salad greens are the only thing cold. He paused. To be honest, they are kinda wilted and warm by the time you get around to eating the second slice. It's still good, though. If you say so. Emily wasn't convinced. I'll take you once this quarantine lifts and the restaurants open back up, Noah promised. That would be nice, Emily said. Not just because of the pizza. It would be nice to be in the same room, she trailed off, afraid she was admitting too much. That would be nice, he echoed in a soft voice. Is it too forward to admit that I'd love to run my fingers through your hair, she asked, before raising her hand to her mouth. She needed to stop sipping the wine, a glass and a half made her chatty. His hair was the most amazing shade of brown and looked so soft. She'd been thinking about it for days. What it would feel like under her fingertips. I would like that, he said. And I would love to be able to walk you to your door tonight and kiss you goodnight. Chapter 6 Good morning, sleepyhead, Emily said when Noah finally answered the video call. It had taken every ounce of her patience to wait until she saw him move around in the kitchen. Look outside your door. What? His voice sounded rough with sleep. He was taking a sip of his coffee. Go open your front door. I may or may not have dropped something off for you. She hoped he'd like the surprise she'd baked up early this morning. Hang on a sec. His stainless steel coffee mug made an appearance front and center on his kitchen counter where his laptop was propped up in view of a perfectly clean sink. 
Her own was a mess again after the impromptu baking session. Less than a minute later, the cup was replaced by the small wicker basket she'd dropped off in front of his door at seven this morning. The bright red cloth napkin still covered the contents. Take a look, she encouraged when his face reappeared in the frame. His hair was even more tempting this morning, soft and slightly tousled from bed. It was the first time she'd seen any of it out of place. Her hands itched to run through it, smoothing it away from his face. Like everyone else, he looked like he could use a haircut. Not for the first time, she was thankful for her long, straight hair. No one would notice if she didn't get it cut for months. Noah carefully peeled the napkin back and lowered his head. This smells amazing. Blueberry? Did you make these? His face rose back into view, surprise painted across his handsome features. She shrugged. I woke up early and was in the mood to bake. I knew the bakery wouldn't be open today. She hoped her own version of his favorite breakfast treat would pass muster. Thank you. He pulled one of the three small muffins she'd placed in the basket for him out and took a bite. Very good, he mumbled between the food and his mouth. Emily smiled and released the breath she hadn't realized she'd been holding. I can't believe you got up at the crack of dawn to bake for me. Noah held up the muffin. No one has done that in a long time. His voice was thick with emotion. Your mom doesn't bake? She knew he checked in on his mother on a regular basis and outside of this current quarantine situation ate dinner with her at least once or twice a week. She doesn't. My grandmother was the baker. She made the best biscuits. The smile on his face widened. And pies. Apple pie that melts in your mouth. Emily could tell his grandmother held a special place in his heart. Tell me about her, she said. Noah shared a few of his favorite memories of visiting his grandparents out in the country. His grandfather grew a large garden and his grandmother raised a flock of chickens. No wonder her baked goods were so good if she had fresh produce and eggs to work with. Emily looked up at her screen and noticed Noah rubbing the back of his neck. Neck trouble, she asked. Not just my neck. My back and shoulders have been giving me trouble the past few days. Always happens when I work too much. I haven't spent enough time away from my desk lately. Nothing if you will leave won't fix though. He shrugged. I should show you a few more exercises to try. If you're interested. That would be great. I've gone through some of your free videos and it's helped. I'm not being consistent enough though. Consistency is key, she said. We could work out together first thing in the morning and then have our coffee break, she suggested. How about after coffee? Emily laughed. Coffee on the balcony now, she asked. We can get started after that if you'd like. He nodded and a few minutes later, they were both settled with fresh coffee and blueberry muffins, laptops propped up in front of them. It was as close as they could get to sharing breakfast together. I'm glad you saved one for yourself, Noah said while she took a bite of her own muffin. She almost spit the food out. One, she gasped after she managed to swallow. I have almost a dozen sitting on my counter. Let me know if you want more. The look on his face was priceless. Most of them are going to the freezer. I figured if I was getting everything out to bake, I should make it worthwhile. No more blueberry muffins from the bakery, Noah mumbled over his coffee cup. I'm going to have to step up my game. I'm hopeless in the kitchen though. If I can't microwave it, it's not happening. What are you planning to do with the tomatoes you're growing then, she asked. He'd spent a lot of time setting up several planters on his balcony over the past two weeks. I have no idea. Eat them, I guess. We're going to have to get you cooking some of your own meals, she said. Much healthier. It's occurred to me that not being able to make anything more than a sandwich is a liability right now. That settles it then. Order a dozen eggs the next time you get groceries. We'll start with scrambled eggs. I can handle eggs. He smiled at her, smugness painted on his face. 
I've even mastered boiling pasta and rice. Omelets, she asked. He shook his head. Order the eggs. And some veggies. This is helping a lot more than I expected it to. Noah rose after their latest morning yoga session and took the laptop with him. Good. No more neck pain? Emily asked. None at all. I'm sleeping better too. There's something to this whole yoga thing. I'm starting to understand some of the comments on your channel. He must have looked as sheepish as he felt, making Emily break out in pearls of laughter. Speaking of which, Emily stopped and looked at something out of view of the screen. When she didn't continue, he gently prodded her to go on. I've been working on the videos for the course we talked about and I was wondering if you were still willing to take a look, give me some feedback, and help me get it all set up. She looked adorable. All shy and insecure when there was no reason for it. Of course. Send it on over and I'll have a look right now. You can grab a shower first. A shy smile washed over her face. I'll send you what I have in a few. By the time he got out of the shower, three videos were waiting on the file sharing site he'd set her up with. Each of them was a good 40 minutes long. Noah sat down to watch, making notes about everything they needed to do to launch Emily's first paid yoga course. He knew it would be a huge hit. His girl was a natural teacher. By the end of the week, everything was ready. Emily had recorded another 11 sessions, each as good as the last. Noah wasn't afraid to admit that he was getting quite good at this yoga thing thanks to the videos and her private tutoring. His back and neck had never felt better. Take a look at the site. I put the last few pieces together this morning. I think we're ready to go if everything looks okay to you. Noah didn't mention that he'd worked through most of the night to get it all finished. His client work had left him with less time than he'd hoped, and he'd had to play catch up. Emily squeed when she saw the order page, and when she watched the video testimonial he'd recorded and embedded, tears sprang to her eyes. You really feel this way, she asked after it had come to an end. Noah had left the most heartfelt and inspiring testimonial about how practicing yoga with her had improved his health and well-being. He'd gone into a lot of detail about his back and neck, explaining what caused the tension and how a quick daily workout reversed all the damage. I do. You've made a big difference in my life with what you've taught me. They were the sweetest words she'd heard all day. Making a difference. Improving lives. At the end of the day, that's why she taught yoga and worked on being able to contribute even when distance, or quarantine orders, presented an obstacle. Chapter 7 The huge success of Emily's beginner yoga course was the only bright event of Noah's week. Looking at how many sales she was making and how many of her customers had already spent hours working through the video content never failed to bring a smile to his face. Even when it was almost time to face another virtual client meeting. Good morning, Tobias. How's business this week, he asked. It had become a standard opening and all anyone wanted to talk about. Not good. In my 40 years of selling real estate, I haven't seen such slow turnover with interest rates this low. It's not good. I think we're going to have to suspend the campaigns for a while. Tobias looked as apologetic as he sounded. I know this isn't a good time. You are counting on my business. Don't worry about it. I'll be fine. Losing a client or two isn't going to put me in trouble. You do what you need to do to ride out the next few months. When things pick back up, I'm sure you'll be back. And hopefully the email campaign they'd created would generate a few new sales over the coming weeks. One or two closings should be enough to keep Tobias afloat. You sure, son? I could try to budget a little in for you. Noah shook his head. I promise you. I'll be fine. And he would be. His grandparents had lived through the aftermath of the Great Depression and had instilled in Noah a sense of living frugally and saving money. His mother had taught her kids how to use what you had. Waste not want not had been another one of her mottos. As a result, he didn't have to worry about his business or personal finances, no matter how much work slowed down in the coming weeks and months. 
and he could afford to be generous with his time and resources. He'd check in with Tobias in a couple of weeks and make sure he had fresh leads. His next meeting didn't go much better. Tom, the florist who had picked the flowers for Emily, was considering cutting his losses and closing up shop. It's not worth it anymore. I'm better off getting back into accounting. I have a job offer and am seriously considering taking it. I haven't made my final decision but figured you should know. Noah felt guilty about not supporting small businesses in the area more than he had. You have to do what's right for you and your family, he said as he got off the call, more depressed than ever. For the first time in days, his neck and shoulders were giving him trouble. He could use a yoga session, but there was too much to do. He needed to try harder to make sure the ads for the few clients that remained converted better. There was too much on the line for them. Over the past few months, they'd become more than clients. He knew these people better than his friends from college. He knew their worries, their concerns, and that they had orthodontist bills to pay for their teenage children. He knew they were worried about the rising cost of college and that they were afraid of rent increases. Making the social media strategies and ads he was coming up with was becoming more important than ever and it upped the pressure. He popped in a leave and sat back down at his desk to get to work. Two hours later, Noah was ready to rip his hair out. He hadn't made nearly as much progress as he'd hoped. Clients continued to check in constantly, asking for tweaks and revisions long before he had enough data to know how well a particular set of ads was working. It made it hard to focus on his work. Deciding enough was enough, he shut down his laptop and walked into the kitchen. Aside from the yoga exercises, Emily had taught him the importance of boundaries. He smiled. It was something he found himself reminding her of frequently since the launch of her yoga course. The woman was working herself into the ground. He pulled a pan out of the cabinet and got to work on an omelet. He'd begun to master the skill. It had taken a while, and plenty of attempts had turned into scrambled eggs. Good thing those were tasty as well. The eggs were cooked to perfection and he was transferring them to a plate when his phone rang. Hi, Mom. Everything okay? It was strange for her to call him during a workday. But then, every day had been a workday lately, and most evenings as well. I'm so sorry about bothering you. I didn't know who else to call. She sounded upset, her voice quivering. You're not bothering me at all. I was taking a break. What happened? Noah kept his voice calm and reassuring. It was unusual for anything to rattle his steadfast mother. My refrigerator stopped working. It's stocked with food because of all this mess going on. I don't know where I'm going to get a new one and keep everything cold since we're not supposed to be going anywhere. What do they expect us to do in a situation like this? I can't afford to buy another month's worth of food. Noah knew better than to offer to cover the cost of the groceries. Why don't I come over and take a look, he suggested. Can you do that, she asked. In an emergency, yes. We'll keep our distance, and I'll wear a mask and gloves. It'll be fine. Noah glanced down at his phone when he heard yet another text message alert. I'll pick up some coolers and ice on the way just in case. I'll be there as soon as I can, he said. He dialed Emily's number to give her a heads up that he'd be missing their afternoon yoga session. The call didn't connect. Strange. It had worked when he called her this morning. The lines must be overloaded, he mused. Everyone was keeping up with family and friends via phone and video chat. He sent her a quick text message instead. Email and text message alerts were coming in fast while he was getting ready. He couldn't handhold clients and deal with his mother's fridge. He shut off his phone, grabbed his wallet, and swallowed two quick bites of the omelet before heading out the door. Emily sat cross-legged on her yoga mat in the living room. Her laptop was set up on the small ottoman she purchased online. It made it much easier to get the right angle for her virtual yoga sessions. She glanced at the clock at the bottom of the screen. Noah was 15 minutes late. She didn't think he'd been late for a single one of their workouts. 
she'd texted him around lunchtime about her next yoga course. Her idea for a series of cardio yoga routines had her excited, and she couldn't wait to talk to him about it. She glanced down at her phone. No response. She hadn't talked to him all day, and now he was missing their workout date. Emily ran through their conversations from the past few days in her mind. Had she said something that would send him running for the hills? This was so unlike him. Noel wasn't the kind of guy who would ghost you. At least she hadn't thought he was. Then again, how well did she really know the man? She'd only spoken to him over the phone and seen him across the courtyard or through a screen. Maybe something had come up, or worse, something had happened to him. She hoped he would call her if he'd gotten sick or called away. Deciding to believe in the best and not worry about anything else, Emily went through her own yoga routine and stepped outside to repot her pepper plants. The fact that this afforded her the best view of Noah's apartment and the possibility of catching him if he walked out on his own balcony had nothing to do with it. By the time the sun was setting, Emily still hadn't heard anything from Noah. She tossed her phone on the kitchen counter after checking it for the hundredth time and grabbed some ice cream. By the time Trudy video chatted her, she was ready for another movie night. What's wrong? Trudy asked. Nothing. I'm all set. What do you want to watch tonight? Emily plastered a fake smile on her face. She should have known that wouldn't work on her best friend. You're wearing PJs, are in your bedroom instead of on your living room couch, and from the look of it, that's a double serving of ice cream topped with gummy bears. Something's upsetting you and we're not starting the movie until you tell me about it. Trudy looked stern as she sat cross-legged on her own bed, surrounded by stuffed unicorns and pink throw pillows. I haven't heard from Noah all day, Emily said. That doesn't sound good, Trudy moved and pulled her laptop closer. You guys have been inseparable. Well, as much as you can be right now. Any idea what may be causing the radio silence? Emily shook her head. None at all. When we had coffee this morning, everything seemed fine. I texted him around lunchtime. No reply, then he missed our yoga session. No explanation at all. No call, no text. Maybe he got busy with work and didn't see your texts? Trudy smiled and took a bite of her own ice cream. He works from his computer and phone. I'm sure he's seen them. And it's not like him to forget about yoga. None of this made any sense, unless he'd gotten tired of her. Maybe he's not as into you as you are into him? Trying to create some distance? The thought had crossed Emily's mind as well. Why wouldn't he say something though? He's been so encouraging about the yoga class and the YouTube channel. Without Noah, she wouldn't have either. She'd be struggling to pay her bills, worrying about what to do about grad school. If that was all she got out of this, so be it. As usual, Trudy read her mind. I'm glad he got you started with those, but I don't like how dependent you are on that guy. What can you do with all this without his help? Emily was worried about it as well. I am learning to do some stuff, like editing and uploading videos, but when it comes to the website and the shopping cart, I'm clueless. That sounds like a lot of work for him to edit those videos and then teach you how to do it. I wonder why he did it. It's the kind of person he is. I'm sure he did something to help my YouTube channel grow. At least in the beginning. Emily had learned enough about the platform over the past two months to know that exposure and growth like hers didn't happen without help from people with reach or paid advertising. Let me show you how much it's grown. She turned on screen sharing and logged into the back end of her YouTube channel. They spent a few minutes poking around in the reports, marveling at how quickly her channel had grown to 200,000 subscribers. Look at these comments. I knew you were popular, girl. But this is out of control. How do you keep up with it? Trudy asked. I go through them a couple of times per day. As long as I don't get behind, it's not a big deal. It's fun to talk to these people from all over the place. Sounds like a lot of work though. What do you get out of it? Trudy sounded concerned. 
I've gotten a few new virtual clients, and I'm sure some of my YouTube subscribers bought the course. I wonder if Noah tracks that kind of stuff. He'd told her all sorts of conversions and stats. Numbers that meant next to nothing to her, but seemed to get him excited. And then, there's the ad revenue. Comments help with visibility. More viewers mean more ads get watched. Interesting. Trudy practically crawled into the screen. How does that work? Emily explained the basics of YouTube advertising revenue to her friend and showed her how much she'd made in the past six weeks. It wasn't enough to live on, but the income was growing daily, and it was well past paying for lunch. In another month or two, it should be enough for a car payment and who knew where it would grow from there. They send this to your bank account every day? Trudy sounded confused. No. It's monthly, but there's a delay. I should get my first little payment later this month. It's been six weeks and you haven't gotten paid at all yet? That seems a little fishy. That's how it works. Noah explained it all when he first signed me up for this. Emily shrugged. It didn't matter. The extra money would be nice, but she looked at it as a bonus to everything else she was doing. Do me a favor, Trudy said. Click on the account tab and then the bank information link. Emily did as told and gasped. That wasn't her banking information. Not yours? Trudy asked gently. I'm guessing it's Noah's. Son of a... Maybe it's a mistake. Maybe YouTube messed up the account settings or this is some sort of dummy account until you enter your own information? Emily was clinging on to hope. I doubt it. I'm willing to bet that's his. He's using me? For financial gain? Emotions rolled and churned in Emily's belly, making it hard to think. Chapter 8 Noah rolled his shoulders. He'd need to take a break soon to get up and stretch. He was behind on work and had left his clients freaked out yesterday. He'd spent all afternoon and evening dealing with his mother's refrigerator. It took three tries, but he'd finally been able to find her a new one locally. It had taken a few extra hours to find someone willing to transport and help him install the new appliance. In the end, it had been all worth it when he saw the relief on his mother's face as they transferred the last few packages from the coolers into the new fridge. He smiled and got ready for his call with Tom the florist. Have you made a decision? Noah asked. I have. I'm going to give it another two months and see if business picks back up. My overhead is pretty low and my suppliers agreed to work with me. I have too much invested in this to let it all go. I'm glad to hear that. I would have hated to watch you lose it all. Noah smiled encouragingly. That might still happen, Tom cautioned. It might, but I doubt it. You're too good at what you do and your regulars love you. That's not enough to keep me afloat though and even some of them are slowing down their orders. Between that and all the church and wedding flower business that's gone. I have some ideas for drumming up new business. Flowers are a great way to stay in touch and show you care without being together in person. Let's play on that and come up with some fun video ads. Noah spent the next hour brainstorming new ideas and mapping out a strategy with the florist. If there was anything he took away from his experience yesterday with his mother, it was that things often weren't as bad as they looked at first. Small businesses were hurting, but many of them could make it through the coming weeks and come out of this quarantine stronger than ever. And he could help them with it. He was a part of this community, and he would do his part to help. Time flew by and it was well past lunch when he came up for air. It was only then that he realized he hadn't heard anything from Emily. He had texted her first thing in the morning to let her know he'd have to miss their coffee date because of client calls. He'd expected to hear back from her. Truth be told, he was surprised he hadn't heard from her last night. When he'd gotten home, he realized he'd had his phone turned off all afternoon. He'd come back to plenty of messages and emails from his clients, but nothing from Emily. When he stepped out on the balcony to water his plants, he hadn't seen her. He got up and walked outside to find the tomato plants were drooping. 
As he watered them, his eyes wandered up to her place. The sheer curtains were drawn and there was no sight of Emily. When he tried to call her, all he got was a message that the number had been disconnected. What was going on? Emily looked up from her book when she saw movement on the balcony across from hers. She was tempted to pull open the curtains and step outside, then checked herself. Noah hadn't returned any of her messages and missed their coffee date this morning. He was sending pretty clear signals that he was no longer interested in her. It broke her heart, but what could she do? She would stay busy and learn to take care of her fledgling yoga business herself. Emily squared her shoulders and got back to the web design book she'd ordered from Amazon. Emily kept her mind off him by practicing working on her website and leading a virtual session for her local yoga group. She considered confronting Noah about the YouTube revenue thing. In the end, she decided it wasn't worth it. He had spent a lot of time helping her get started. He could keep that little bit of money. The real profits came from her private clients anyway. Only this morning, she'd gotten an email from someone down on Palmer Island who'd come across her videos and was interested in private lessons. Emily smiled as she logged into her email account. There were another couple of emails from customers of her beginner yoga course asking when the next one would come out. Emily had recorded the first few videos, but without Noah's help, there was no telling how long it would take her to get them finished and up for sale. Maybe she could hire someone? Emily was startled out of her thoughts by the ring of the doorbell. Her heart stuttered. Maybe Noah had come to talk to her, explain why he'd ignored her for the past 36 hours. Or maybe he'd sent another bouquet. The sunflowers he'd sent over a week ago were still brightening her kitchen table. She glanced through the peephole, anticipating Noah's handsome face. Surprised, she opened the door. Hi, Dad. What are you doing here? A smile washed over her face at the unexpected visit. She hadn't seen her parents in person for months. A trip up to Asheville to see them had been out of the question. Her father stepped back three paces, keeping his distance. He was such a cautious and fastidious man. It's good to see you. You look well, he said. He was holding a white plastic bag and put it down between them. I'm so sorry about the phone. I got you a new one. They said it was easier and faster than trying to reactivate your old one without you there. And you were due for an upgrade, anyway. What are you talking about? Emily reached into her back pocket and pulled out her perfectly good smartphone. My phone is working fine. Have you tried making a call? Her father asked. She hadn't. And come to think of it, she hadn't received any phone calls in about two days. Or text messages. Her emails had come through just fine and video chatting with Trudy had worked. Both of those used Wi-Fi and everything else she'd done on her laptop. She tried calling her dad's number. It didn't go through. Instead, a robotic voice asked her to call customer service to restore service. It's not working, she said disbelievingly. How had she not noticed? Someone stole my credit card information a few months back, her father explained. The bank canceled the card and sent me a new one. I thought I'd updated everything I used it for, but somehow I missed your phone. I'm surprised they didn't call before turning it off. If I hadn't gone to the store yesterday to get your mother a new phone, I never would have known. You drove all the way down here to bring it to me? You could have mailed it, or we could have called and had them turn this one back on. She waved her phone. Her father stepped to the side, then back, looking at his feet. I know this is hard on you, living by yourself. Your mom and I understand you didn't want to move back home when all this started, but we worry about you. The least I can do is make sure you have a working phone. This was the fastest way I could make that happen. So yes, I drove all the way down here. It was all I could do to keep your mother from coming along. They chatted for a few minutes in the hallway, her father refusing to come inside and break quarantine rules. It was good to see you, she said when he was ready to leave. And thank you for this. She held up the new phone, trying hard not to let him see the tears that were threatening to well up. 
It was nice to know she was loved so unconditionally. Her new phone was set up and ready to go. Even her contacts had been transferred over, and she noticed several text messages and a voicemail notification. That's when it dawned on her. Maybe Noah hadn't been ignoring her. Maybe her phone issues kept them apart. Taking a deep breath, she dialed his number. Finally, I've been trying to get a hold of you for days. Well, since yesterday. Are you okay? Noah sounded concerned and relieved at the same time. I'm fine. My phone got shut off. Emily explained the how and why and that she'd received her replacement phone only a few minutes ago. That explains it. I was starting to think you were avoiding me, Noah said. I was getting similar ideas, Emily admitted. I was trying to figure out what I said or did that would cause you to ghost me like that. There is nothing you could do. I'm not saying we will never disagree or argue, or that I won't get mad on occasion, he said. That's part of any serious relationship. I'll never ignore you though. I'll tell you what's bothering me, and I hope you will do the same. Did he just say serious relationship? Emily's heart went into overdrive and it left her a little breathless. She didn't know what to say. Finally, she stammered out, I will. Noah laughed and the sound sent the butterflies in her stomach fluttering around like crazy. Good. I've had quite a bit going on as well. I'm sorry I missed our yoga session the past two days. My mom called yesterday around lunchtime. Her refrigerator broke down. He caught Emily up on his adventures in appliance shopping and installation. The entire hallway was lined with coolers. I had to go back out twice to buy ice and try to find more. I didn't know you could fit so much food in a single fridge. Emily could imagine. Her parents always kept theirs well stocked, and it was a bit like playing Tetris trying to get anything in or out. She didn't want to know what it looked like right now with everyone taking fewer trips to the grocery store. My back's paying for it today though, he said. I'm going to need that yoga session if you're free this afternoon. He stopped. Not that I would want to take advantage. You're not. It's the least I can do after everything you've done to help me with the virtual yoga stuff. Emily meant every word. She couldn't believe she thought Noah was taking advantage of her in any way. Desperation and isolation did strange things to the mind. So what if the advertising revenue went to him? Speaking of which, do you have an update on the new course? Noah asked. Emily told him about the videos she'd recorded and edited. He asked her to send them over and he'd work on getting it all set up and ready to go. Oh, and there's one more thing I keep forgetting about, he said. You need to log into your YouTube account and change the banking info. The first payment is scheduled to go out next week and it still has my information in there. I had to put something in to get you started. The last little glimmer of doubt about Noah was smothered with one casual statement. He truly was the kind, selfless man she thought he was. If he were closer, she'd hug him, better yet, if they weren't still under quarantine orders, she'd run up to his place and kiss the man silly. Two weeks later, Emily recorded the last of the videos for the new course. When she hit stop on the recording, she turned off the camera and pulled the memory card out. Transferring the files over to her laptop was the most tedious part of the whole operation. She sat down at her desk and got the process started before pulling out her phone to check the news. Her fingers flew to Noah's number. Did you see it? she asked excitedly. She was pacing up and down the living room, too keyed up to stay still. See what? You have to be a little more specific, honey. Emily swore she heard the smirk in his voice. Did you see that the governor loosened the quarantine restrictions? As of today, you can spend time with one other person outside of your immediate household. You know what that means, her voice went up an octave in all the excitement. We can meet. In person. See each other face to face. She nodded excitedly, then remembered she was on the phone. Yes. So, would you like to come over for dinner tonight? I would love that. What time? 
The rest of the day went by slowly as she cleaned and cooked. Then all of a sudden, time flew. The food was ready and Emily had just enough time to hop in the shower and get dressed before her doorbell rang. This time, her racing heart was right. Noah was standing in front of her door, holding a small basket with something wrapped in a red cloth napkin. Emily was pretty sure it was the basket she'd used to drop off the blueberry muffins for him after their first date. Come on in, she said, stepping back from the door. She gave him a quick tour of her apartment. It's a mirror image of mine, he said while setting the basket on the kitchen counter. I brought some warm bread. I wasn't sure what you were fixing, he looked slightly uncomfortable, the same way she felt. What is it, she asked. It smells amazing. It was definitely something freshly baked. I've been experimenting with bread baking. It's one of those no-need breads. He pulled the napkin to the side and revealed a golden brown, crusty loaf of bread. I'm getting the butter. Let's try it. Emily was on her way to the fridge when the timer went off. Chicken is done, she said. After setting the butter out on the counter to soften, she pulled the roasted chicken she'd made. That smells amazing, he said, his stomach grumbling in agreement. This tastes amazing, Emily said, grabbing another chunk of bread. The chicken is supposed to rest a few minutes, but I think we should risk it. I'm hungry. Wielding her largest knife, she carved the bird expertly and then prepared their plates before carrying them to the kitchen table where a large salad topped with homegrown tomatoes and a bottle of wine were waiting. Emily broke off another chunk of the warm, crusty bread and dipped it into the homemade salad dressing pooled on the side of her plate. I can't get over how good this is. Better than the bakery. How did you learn to make this? Noah set down his fork and picked up his wine glass, before answering. YouTube, he said. It's surprising what you can learn on there. Emily laughed. He had a point. Who knew you could use it to get into yoga and bread baking alike? To be honest, this isn't my first attempt. I made a couple of loaves and was down to the last packet of yeast I got from my mom. He took a sip of wine. If this one failed, I would have come empty-handed, or with a bowl of breadcrumbs. Emily doubted that. He was too kind and polite to show up without something to contribute to the meal. They took their time, eating slowly and enjoying good conversation and simply being able to sit across the same table. She wasn't sure what she'd been so worried about after extending the spontaneous dinner invite. The fear that they wouldn't get along as well in person as they had over the phone and video screen turned out to be unfounded. Sitting and sharing a meal with him, breaking bread, was the most natural thing to do. It was like they'd been dating for months, not virtually seeing each other for a few short weeks during trying times. It was real and had become more than apparent when Noah turned before walking out the door that night. This isn't me walking you to your door, he mumbled while his head was lowering towards her face. Can I still kiss you goodnight? Emily nodded and her eyes drifted closed. His lips brushed over hers, softly, tentatively, giving her time to change her mind. She raised her arms and ran her fingers through his hair. It was softer than she'd imagined. Clasping her hands behind his neck, she rose to her toes to get closer. It was all the invitation Noah needed. He deepened their kiss, and it was better than anything she'd imagined all those days since their first dinner date. Epilogue Palmer Island, SC, one year later. If there's anything else you two need, call me. I'll be in the kitchen getting dinner started, Miss Doris said before leaving Emily and Noah to get settled in. They'd rented two rooms from the older woman who used part of her charming beach house and the adjoining little guest cottage as a little bed and breakfast. Do you want to unpack or walk out to the beach first? Noah asked. Beach, please, Emily said, standing at the window. She could see a tiny sliver of the beach through the vegetation of the side garden and the neighboring house. Do you think we have time to go for a swim before dinner? The drive down to the coastal South Carolina barrier island south of Myrtle Beach had taken longer than expected. After a missed summer of beach vacations last year, everyone was ready to dip their toes into the Atlantic Ocean. The end result had been traffic jams on the major roads. 
They'd finally made it and had a couple of hours to relax and unwind before their dinner reservation at Shea Paul's. Noah glanced at his phone. If we don't stay out too long, and it doesn't take you two hours to get ready after, we should be fine. You know me better than that, Emily laughed. She would be showered, dressed, and have her hair done in under 30 minutes, and he knew it. Are you going to be ready in time though? Noah didn't bother answering. He was already walking to his room to get changed. I'll meet you on the deck in five minutes. That wouldn't leave time to unpack. Emily unzipped her suitcase and dug for her bathing suit, towel, and the bottle of sunscreen she'd double-wrapped in plastic bags. The scent of it was heavy all around her when she stepped out on Miss Doris's sprawling back deck. The view of the beach was breathtaking. Noah sat by the steps leading down to the sand and held his hand out for her when she approached. Hand in hand, they walked down the beach, starting their first vacation together as a couple. Can we try a different place for dinner tonight? Emily asked. Something a little more low-key? Shea Paul had been impressive. The food was delicious in a gourmet kind of way and the service impeccable. Fancy dining wasn't Emily's thing. She'd much rather eat a burger and pick up fries with her fingers at a place where she was comfortable speaking it more than a soft whisper. Yes. Noah sounded relieved. I kept worrying about using the wrong fork at that place. I'll ask Miss Doris for a recommendation when we head back in. The past two days had been pure bliss. They've gone swimming, walked down to the pier to grab ice cream, and gone on a boat tour that took them past old plantation houses and lighthouses that rivaled the one on Hunting Island from the postcard Noah had tucked in her mailbox more than a year ago. They'd eaten fresh seafood and last night Miss Doris had insisted they join her for dinner. She'd made homemade pasta in fresh tomato sauce. Emily wasn't sure where she'd gotten the tomatoes, but could have sworn they were homegrown. You couldn't make sauce like that from hothouse tomatoes. The older woman had topped it off with garlic shrimp, which she assured them had still been swimming in the ocean that morning. It didn't get fresher than that. Emily's favorite, though, had been the dolphin tour where they watched them jump and dance all around the small boat. The skipper kept to himself, only pointing out the pod when they'd appeared on the horizon. After that, he'd allowed them to enjoy the show uninterrupted. Not every dolphin tour came across a group of dolphins swimming together, and this particular pod was larger than most. It was an experience Emily would never forget. Lost in thought, she didn't notice Miss Doris walk out onto the deck where they were drying off from their latest dip in the ocean. You should check out Mary's. It's an old-fashioned diner with great food. Be sure to try her peanut butter pie. Mary is the only person on the island whose baking comes close to mine. The gray-haired woman smiled. She wasn't boasting. Emily had tasted the woman's baked goods and spent a fun morning making muffins with her. The recommendation was spot on. Their burgers and fries were great and the slice of peanut butter pie was to die for. They walked hand in hand along the beach, the moon rising over the water. The only sound was the waves gently rolling. Neither one of them said a word, content with the other's company. I wish we didn't have to go home tomorrow, Emily said. The brief vacation had gone by too fast. We'll be back, Noah said. You tell me when you can take another break from school, and we'll come down. Emily nodded. It would be a while before she could afford to take more time off. Between the virtual graduate program she'd signed up for and the work with her yoga clients, her schedule was packed. Emily sighed. I wish we could live down here. Noah looked thoughtful. We could do it. We're both working remotely and you only have to be on campus a few times per semester. There's not much keeping us in Charlotte. Her eyes lit up. He was right. They could live anywhere. Before the train of thought could take hold, Noah pulled her to a stop. There's something I've been meaning to do all night, he said. Emily grinned. She loved his kisses. Her eyes drifted close, but the only thing that happened was him letting go of her hand. Confused, she opened her eyes. Noah was down on one knee in the sand in front of her, holding out a small blue box with a diamond ring nestled inside. 
the light of the full strawberry moon made it sparkle. It took her breath away. Emily Smithfield, the past year has been the best of my life. I can't imagine living without you, here or in Charlotte. Will you marry me? He looked at her, waiting for an answer. Though the proposal had come as a complete surprise, it took her less than a heartbeat to answer, yes, I'll marry you. Noah slipped the ring on her finger before she pulled him up and wrapped her hands around his neck. She rose on her toes and kissed him, hoping to show him she loved him just as much and couldn't imagine building a life with anyone else. I can't wait to tell Trudy she's going to be a bridesmaid, she said as they walked up the stairs to Miss Doris's house. Her best friend would be a huge help in planning the wedding. She couldn't wait to get started. And on our honeymoon, I'm taking you swimming with dolphins, he promised. The End This has been Love in Quarantine. Written by Suzanne Ash. Copyright 2021 by Suzanne Ash. Production Copyright 2022 by Suzanne Ash. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe if you want me to put more of my books on YouTube. Visit my website at www.suzanneash.com for more of my books or find me on Amazon.